Tak začneme. Všechny moc vítáme na dnešním bloku expertů. Jsme rádi, že jste se k nám dnes připojili. Naším dnešním hostem je paní doktorka Tatiana Sanchez, která v současné době působí na univerzitě v Lisabonu a poví nám něco o svém výzkumu nebo o svém projektu v oblasti mapování trendů v oblasti kompetencí univerzitních knihovníků a knihovnic. Tatiana, welcome. We are here. Uh, we are very glad you are here with us today. And I already introduced you uh, very briefly, but if there is anything you would like to say about yourself at the beginning, the floor is yours. Uh, okay. Oh, well, I'm I'm very glad to be here with you. It's an honor to be invited for this uh, talk. And uh, yes, I'm I'm a librarian uh, almost for 30 years, and I start uh, with uh, being technical, um, a professional technician, and then I go on. And well, today I'm also a teacher for future librarians. So all these uh, matters tell me something, and I'm very uh, happy to be here to share my thoughts with you. I hope this will be inspiring so that you can um, also think about it as your this profession. It's very in interesting. So I don't know. Um, is every is everyone hear me and see me well there in the room and online? It's everything okay? Maybe I don't know if I can start. We can hear you. We can see you. Okay, thank you. Um, so. I will start and presenting you what will be my well my talk about. I will talk about some contexts for the study that I have been made. And this context is about what we are living as librarians in a changing world of information and reading. Then I will talk about readers, digital fluency and information literacy. And I think you will understand how this is connected with the trends on future skills for all the professionals in this area. I, I have to thank you a lot because you answered my questionnaire. It's, an, uh, it's, it's the same questionnaire that I best here to Portuguese students. So it will be interesting to see what do you think and what it's uh, similar and what is different between you and the students here that are all also studying to be librarians in the future. And then it, it, you can put me some questions and well, we can talk a little bit. So. First, we, what are we living today? We know that in information, libraries and reading are, are a multiple and contextual uh, um, changing world and also challenging. And I like this citation from Roberto Igarza. It's um, so a certain, certain American. He, he says that reading is a social practice in transition, immersive, reflective, personal, sometimes stealthy, interstitial sharing, practice of discovery and knowledge, of fun and also of sociability. This is more present than ever, despite anthropology of reading practices, demonstrating their diversification and increasing complexity. So, this is the motto for my reflection about this. We can um, think about reading uh, as a deep form of attention to writing, both on the text and 
to the process of writing. But we have here as librarians a role of mediation. And this role is to bring reading to the center of a new ecology of attention, because we are competing with other ways of communication where texts, documents, and stimuli are shared. So in this sense, what is required today is to pay attention to attention. How are our users and future users uh, become attentive for information and reading? Um, well, we see that our new media reading and this context of digital transformation bring new tools for discovering information. So, also the student-centered teaching is encouraging librarians to explore more in different strategies for teaching information literacy. And at the same time, we need to diversify skills and take advantage of ledger reading as an opportunity. I don't know if you agree, because, well, I'm today I'm an academic librarian. I work in the university as a librarian and as a researcher, but maybe these issues are more connected to public libraries. So it's a little bit, um, it, it, it's not always something uh, so specific. But we have to think about this context. So first, we see rapid changes in the information context. Then uh, new tools emerge and new formats and sources for information. We have this context of student-centered learning that um, it's uh, forcing us to promote information literacy and to explore library resources in another forms. So we have also to diversify our own skills and also the skills of our users. But I see here the leisure reading as an opportunity. So they, I will talk about that. Um, I don't know if someone is, yes, someone is accepting the participants. Um, so we see that these people and these relationship between people and culture, media, ecosystems invite us to rethink this cultural ecology in terms of participation, appropriation, production, circulation, and consumption. So today, uh, the traditional actors are changing roles. Um, publishers and press and recipients themselves count as publishers, or as writers, because we all have access to YouTube or to Twitter or to a blog where we can write down what we think. So the editing part and the publishing, it's not uh, exclusively from those who are formed to do that. And because of these contexts, we have to think how to develop new reading practices where multimedia production and consumption proliferates and how to build communities in a cultural system that is experiencing a period of excessive content production. And finally, how to gain visibility to potential audiences. So this, um, I think these are concerns about we as librarians taking our space, our uh, actually, our professional space and our, our cultural intervention. And I think it's important to pay attention to readers, pay attention to digital fluency and to information literacy as instruments to promote reading. 
So readings, um, this keeping the text flowing has become a priority. Uh, the text is adjusting to several supports, but also in uh, some way it's broken down and appears uh, in a way of more hypertextuality. So authority, creativity, dissonant voices are reconfiguring the scenario with unpredictable forms of participation, and this shapes different platforms. And reading, well, we know that our more information and abstract knowledge that requires attention. So the focus is on the experience management, on the subject's relationship with the text in the contextualized practice. We see here various supports, languages, fonts, sources, traditions, different mediations for different contexts, and new dynamics and reading interactions. However, we also see that it's increasingly difficult to separate social and cultural practices from the technological phenomenon. We are imbibed in technology. So how can we separate the act of reading from the practices of writing and from technology itself? Well, although not always true on screen, the reader tends to become a reader writer because this all context uh, um, allows him to become a participating in another ways. But how can we optimize uh, his skills? I think is improving digital fluency. This will optimize browsing and reading in the digital environment. So, our active involvement as librarians, I think, will be in enhancing critical thinking in the face of information, to know how to evaluate sources, to check facts, to know how to observe and uh, consider prior knowledge in a critical, creative and conscious way, particularly in digital media. So are, there are social and ethical premises that underpin support for teaching and learning and in this particular mission of higher education libraries where I stand. Um, I think because of that, my view is that is essential to promote digital fluency since this instability of the screens is coexisting with the stability of the book support. But in both ways, readings are developed. So we cannot oppose digital uh, reading from traditional reading in impressed uh, supports, you know, from the book itself. We can reflect upon changes in reading habits but we see that this cultural uh, virtualization of everything is changing reading habits. And we are, well, surrounded by instant news and instant notices and mobile emails, social media, hyperlinks. Well, this changes the brain and, and how the brain processes information and how we cognitively respond to information. So this will cause fatigue in the face of the virtual environment. And now we see another phenomenon because of this people now are missing being away from the screens. I don't know if you agree with this, but we can discuss it later. So now we have a new opportunity to promote a reading culture. In one hand, we have a dominance of screens that is being empowered by the COVID pandemics, and we have quick access to all contact, and we have this immediacy and always on 
this causes the zoom fatigue. But we need, in the other hand, to, to switch off, show, slow down, and return to the timelessness of the printed page. So we have two kinds of um, ways that you, we can read, and all of this is reading. But maybe in different contexts, we know well what is giving us um, what we want to read more appropriately. In academic contexts, um, we read to learn, we read to know, and US students know um, more than anyone that reading is linked to instrumental intentions. You have to study. You have to prepare for, for exams. You have to do um, homework and so on. So academic libraries will traditional will provide collections and resources to meet these needs, not only for students, but also for faculty, for researchers. And where, what I have, am I saying this? Why did I think that uh, laser reading is important uh, even in an, an academic context? To academic libraries, being aware of this can um, help to find good opportunities to contribute to the whole, um, the whole education of the students because this um, it is um, influencing first in the strength of concentration, memorization, and focus skills. And this is done through deceleration of reading. This includes naturally literary reading and printed works. And second, literary reading con contributes also for increased social and cultural capital and this is itself uh, an intangible asset for the individual. And third, this integral formation of the individual, this integral education also stems from his access to cultural goods such as literature. So I think it's also important that libraries continue to provide access to literature, although our academic libraries or school libraries so what examples can we promote? Maybe reading in an academic environment uh, can be made and in reading groups, they promote transversal skills such as critical thinking, reflection and interpretation, communication and orality, and exchange of ideas and discursivity. So these are all skills that we will need on future action in our professional uh, context. And thinking about higher education in an integral way will inspire librarians to act to ensure this cultural dissemination through networks and partnerships and management of literary collections meetings with writers, uh, maybe invite some scientists, maybe invite some experts on, well, uh, some issues that we are um, learning in academia, but also among other actions, this will contribute to the construction of these transversal skills that we are talking about. This approach includes understanding the mission and the essential functions of higher education libraries. And this will be um, lead to engaging creative practices and critical reflection to develop true provoking questions in promoting reading. And this will create new knowledge to participation in communities and networks and the proposal of learning and citizenship. And this implies also to adopt a strategic vision and this inter integral education at the individual, at the, every opportunity, including also leisure reading. 
And as we become aware of these thought processes, metacognition, the way that we uh, comprehend information, I think this is a fundamental aspect of critical thinking development because um, at the moment we are aware the way that we think, we are uh, more apt to uh, use this, uh, our abilities to, to learn more and to be aware of other things. So at the same time, critical thinking is more stimulated when questioning is used as a method. We have to question everything. We have to have curiosity, creativity as tools because they allow us to analyze different perspectives in the analysis of information. They change points of view. They accumulate information from different angles and maintain the questioning attitude. And this is really important. So reading, critical thinking and information literacy are all interconnected. The process of analyzing different pieces of information, evaluation, inference of, or decision making requires a concrete context. And this is um, a disciplinary and reflective appropriation. And this is the defin a definition of critical thinking, but information literacy follows exactly the same procedure when we have to um, search for information, select information, evaluate information, retrieve it and use it and communicate it in an ethical way. So maybe uh, this, all these concepts are um, linked in a more deeper way that we thought before. Then, I don't know, I think you are all aware of information literacy framework. What this, this framework has bring us? What challenges and practical implications does the framework, the framework adds to our profession? It presents a set of interconnected core concepts that are implemented in a flexible way. You can see the six uh, frames represented in this flower. And this will develop, uh, these frames are developed around a set of, of conceptual frames that integrate goals and concepts that students must, must, must reach and surpass in order to guarantee the development of a genuine knowledge in discipline, profession, or domain of knowledge. So the frames are authority that is constructed and contextual, information creation as a process, information has value, research as inquire, scholarship as conversation, and searching as strategic exploration. And this, all these concepts can be um, studied in a flexible way because we can apply it in various prisms when studying information. So the framework will favor a culture of sharing resources and knowledge, increasing development, capabilities and critical spirit, which reinforces citizenship. And this will um, also improve the autonomy of processes and their creative potential. And in the current digital context, there is an increased concern with access to information as it has become exponentially mediated by technologies. And, and in this context, several problems can emerge from restrictions on freedom of access to information 
or freedom of expression due to the lack of knowledge to deal with the technologies and digital information sources, vulnerability and lack of preparation regarding privacy management to digital traps, fallacy, misinformation or fake news. And these are emerging issues that we must be aware of. So librarians' roles are um, diversified and what are we doing nowadays? We are very focused on information skills and librarians have to develop these information skills in themselves and in their audience, their publics. We are focused in information and data management. Uh, librarians must show themselves as curators and defenders of reliable, complete and credible data and information. We are also advocating open science, open science promoting this movement, ensuring uh, that we are digital experts for the help that will be needed. We have also aware that scientific information in the digital context, context can be safer if and when we are enhancing the conscious of using scientific information to a wider public. And we are also articulating digital and media literacy with our um, traditional uh, ways of um, promoting the navigation uh, skills among users and a safer way to doing that. And finally, we have to implement quality criteria. This will make possible to reuse the orange, uh, origin of the information, its diversity, and to believe without forgetting in what circumstances it can be in what form the information in an ethical and legal way. So this was the context that I have to, I, I like to show to you so that we can reflect upon all the surrounding context that we are living today, nowadays. And now I will uh, present you um, a study that I made about international trends on future skills for librarians. In fact, my curiosity uh, began as how can we prepare ourselves to work in this changing context? How can we do something to be prepared for the future? This is very difficult because we don't know what is uh, 10 years from now, what, what what will happen in our profession? So this curiosity, I think, um, well, what we see now is that already is, uh, there are an increase in the diversification of information to manage. We are submersive in technologies that need to be mastered we see that our spaces are taking on new functions as well maker spaces and other spaces to experience and do things that are related to information and knowledge. And we see that our, it is a most multiplicity of user requests that call for the updating of their information literacy skills. And also the open science movement is in expansion. And this, all this um, require new skills for these professionals. I think we are changing, we are assisting to changes, and we as professionals working with information, we have also to change our perspective. So, the first question is, why this study? 
We know that getting ready is also being curious about the world around us. In fact, better and updated skills will result in tangible benefits in reducing costs and resources for our library management. It will also result in the optimization of knowledge collections and information management, the increase of user or academic, uh, the student academic success, and the amplification of the production and projection of the research carry out. And this is uh, very focused on academic libraries, you know, higher education libraries in general. So, higher education librarians should feel encouraged to understand this changing environment as an additional challenge. And in this sense, we have all to prepare ourselves to face emerging conditions, to face opportunities for improvement and take a central role in all this process. This means also to invest significantly in the development and adaptation of professional skills. But how can we do this? It's well, we don't have all the answers, but to better understand this ecosystem, we find ourselves seeing, I think, a good way is studying international trends. How will I will now explain how this study was developed? So I was curious about this uh, necessary preparation of we as librarians and to face our emerging trends. So, I was studying several documents and um, in 2005, the European Council of Information Associations established um, the Librarian Information Skills Professional uh, the library information science, sorry, professional skills. And this um, is, was um, related to five areas uh, that were recognized to this uh, professional. So uh, in 2005, in Europe, all professionals should um, manage information and this uh, implies to have basic knowledge about the professional in relation to information documentation. You, you know, um, how the, the treating documents and the document chain and everything around cataloging, indexing and everything about that. And in, in this uh, document, it will also was recognized skills related to computer and internet technologies, skills related to interlocution and internal and external communication, management skills related to budget, project man marketing, human resources, training and pedagogical actions, and other knowledge, mainly the knowledge that we have to know so that we can respond in an adequate way to our users in each uh, library. You know, it's, if it's a specialized library in law, for instance, we have to know about law and rights and everything so that we can um, locate rapidly the information. But this other knowledge, Normally, we don't get it in the academic um, context. So, I, I, I was exploring these kinds of um, studies and some years ago, a study proposed to reflect on the characteristics of the professional skills. And these authors that I, I cite here uh, did the um, a study where approximately 200 job advertisements for this area were analyzed 
employability requirements with more occurrences such as qualification and skills were identified and serialized. The most significant areas uh, mentioned by potential, potential employers were uh, certification in information science, the work experience, skill in communication, organization, collection management, teamwork, and user training in digital content management. I think this is interesting because we see what the employers are reaching for, what are the requirements they need to a good and what they think it's a good librarian. Later on, the joint task force on competencies for librarians in support of research and academic communication in 2018 um, reflect upon these library and information science profiles and they state that it's very important to be aware of digital humanities, open digital librarian, access platforms, digital files, databases, and also to handle information so that we can be up to date and moving in areas such as big data, scientific data, routing website management, database building, social networks, dissemination, publication, collaborative work, and issues of copyright. And this is, well, we see here some challenges. But this joint task force, as you see in, uh, below, is a, is a joint associ association um, um, team that reflects upon um, this, these issues on information and library knowledge. So, another study in 2019 uh, shows us several domains of professional competencies that librarians must have. Critical thinking, interaction, relationships, and presentation and communication skills, media literacy, and, re and writing skills. And, well, some of them converge and some of them do not converge, but we see there is a, a focus on the digital, a focus on reflection, on interaction, and on communication. communication. So, I thought, well, what other, um, maybe other instances are thinking about the professional professionals and the world economic forum as a broader institution that studies social challenges and provides policies for country readiness um, they made a document it's towards the rescaling revolution where they um, point out several necessary skills for future workers, not only and not specifically librarians, but future workers will have to have analytical thinking and innovation, active learning and learning strategies, creativity, originality and initiative, technology design and programming, critical thinking and analysis, problem solving, leadership and social influence, emotion, emotional intelligence, elaboration, problem solving and conceptualization and analysis and evaluation systems. So these are a very um, challenge, challenging skills for all the professionals to have in the future, but I don't know. And uh, well, in synthesis, in, in libraries, according to this um, forward looking and current documents, 
there are important skills area for library and information science professionals. Uh, professional skills that focus on technical and scientific knowledge on this area. Pedagogical skills that influence um, how we manage to teach our users, mainly on digital fluency and the communication ability. And finally, e-learning skills to construct, assess and make available distance information. But this, this is another study that um, I think it's interesting because it adds some new perspective. So, uh, Elia stated in 2013 that skills of library and information professionals will once again be recognized, especially the ability to detach ourselves from specific content and instead concentrate on metadata around it. So, I underlined find, filter, connect, as this will become the mantra of our profession and organizations will be eager to recruit our members to help them find a way through the mass of intelligence which is useless without a guide or interpreter. So the most desirable skills will be a combination of information, knowledge and records management. I really agree with this um, library and information services uh, statement. And I, sorry. And current and guiding documents, what do they point out? What about students? What do they think? So in the first stage, I thought I could um, make a document analysis of the main instruments that regulate and guide international professional associations. And I listed some of them. And then I seek to obtain a comprehensive overview, conducting a detailed reading and the, in the observation of these guiding texts. The selection criteria included being in force and updating and having a strategic vocation and underlying professional performance. And in the second stage, I thought it would be useful to make a questionnaire service survey to library and information science students so that we can understand if one, um, if the policies combine with the practical uh, and professional views, you know. So first, um, this this documents analysis you, you see that are several um, associations and organizations dedicated to our cause. And I thought to perceive their potential adoption by the professional community, providing the actors, the professionals, with guiding guidelines within their performance. And really, I think we all around the world are, uh, we are all looking uh, to these kind of documents to know future trends. In that way, the current topics I find out and the most relevant topics regarding future in the academic libraries show us this uh, say some main topics are coincident. Learning and investigation, open access, digital environments, content management, and the development of skills and abilities of library and the information science professionals. These are all the topics that are common in the several guiding documents. So analyzing this, I thought to 
to make these clusters in, inspired by these documents. It's possible to group it and by action clusters. And the main trends of the area are this evaluation and innovation, infrastructures and repositories, uh, skills and digital fluence, collections and heritage, and also open access and open academy. So, what do you think about it? I will, <laughs> I will present the results of the questionnaire that I sent to you, uh, not yesterday, but the day before. And what did you respond? In this questionnaire, we obtained 45 valid responses and in demographic way, um, 29 were females, 12 were males and four didn't want to respond. And in the list studies, 33 were in graduation courses, 11 in master's degrees and just one in doctoral studies. Uh, the, the ones that respond. In the first questions, I asked uh, about this, the five groups of competences and aptitudes of that first European information documentation professionals guiding document. I don't know if you remember. And um, these five areas were the areas that a professional had to have in 2005. And I was curious about how do you thought that you learn this kind of knowledge? And I discovered that um, in these answers to the first question, we can observe that academic competencies are more generic and related to the scope of documentation and information, but also in other kind of knowledge. And those that are preferably acquired in the professional context seem to be related with specific knowledge acquired in practical experience. So you can see the columns in, in blue for the academic context learning for the skills and in red the professional environment that also uh, help us to learn um, professional skills and in the second questions I, I i thought this very interesting what do you think about the World Economic Forum uh, skills that foresees the 10 domains of competences and you choose mostly critical thinking and analysis, then creativity, originality and initiative, and finally technology design and programming as the three most um, important skills to develop well closely followed by leadership and social influence so you recognize that librarians have, have to deal with a lot of change a lot of um, uh, a flexible capability of uh, adaptation and so on so i, I think this correlates with uh, what we think about this. And concerning to that clusters, that five areas of competences, this question uh, uh, wanted to find out uh, what areas that you will highlight as uh, the most important in your future. And you choose uh, technological areas, these uh, issues related to open science and infrastructures are, um, I'm sorry, the, the, the information and digital skills as well as open science, open academy are highlighted. 
and in, in, they appear as uh, two great choices, but as future librarians uh, seem to be particularly sensitive to the need to develop skills in these areas. But I was a little bit surprised that no one mentioned infrastructures, catalogs or repositories as a priority. I don't know if it, it, it's already everything is done in this area, but I was really, really surprised that no one thinks this is a priority to develop in your skills. So, now let's see what have you, your colleagues in Portugal responded uh, to the same questions. Well, uh, surprisingly, also 45 respondents um, uh, uh, 45 uh, responses were obtained and in terms of uh, demographic characterization, three, uh, 33 were females and 10 were males and two did not answer. And in terms of library and information stu studies, seven were in graduation courses. 25 in master's degrees and 13 in doctoral studies. So we have here um, a different uh, approach. But I, on the first questions, we can observe that academic competencies are more generic and related to the scope of documentation and information, such as your own vision. And those that are preferably acquired in professional context seem to be related to specific knowledge of the intervention area. And this is different of uh, what were your feeling. Concerning the second question uh, about that uh, 10 domains of the World Academic Forum, we see some changes here too but creativity, originality and initiative was also something that you point out. So here is a coincidence. Uh, then the Portuguese students point out analytical thinking and innovation. And finally, active learning and learning strategies closely followed by leadership and social influence. All these choices, I think we can consider it uh, to be interconnected with the requirements of areas of expertise emanating for guiding documents. And this reveals an alignment and confirms that we are aware of what is needed in our area. And finally, about that clusters, the five areas of competence for future librarians, um, the respondents commented on what they thought was the one that needs more investment shortly. And here the Portuguese students um, responded information and digital skills, literacy and digital fluency, uh, clearly show to be the preference. And then the technological areas are also highlighted and the issues related to open science and infrastructures appear as following choices. Well, future librarians in Portugal seem to be particularly sensitive to the need of developing skills in these areas. Finally, uh, there was an open question, but uh, in your case, you, you well, almost uh, anyone respond to the open question, but it's okay. I want to show you what Portuguese students comment about um, some, well, some quality issues about this matter. So, the main analysis of this data were obtained for nine comments left by respondents and some students perceive their academic training as too theoretical. I don't know if you agree, 
And one of them said, on master's degree, learns theory, but the real world is very different. We lack the practical part, the skill to apply. We feel lost, and despite having an academic degree, seems in practice, we know nothing. In my view, there is a huge job to be done in terms of the training professionals, the affirmation of the professional class, their appreciation, and the skills to be developed. And in addition, they criticize the way the curriculum is constructed. Information documentation courses in Portugal are not currently preparing professionals in this area for challenges of the coming decades in terms of skills. Masters are a distortion of what were postgraduate courses in late 90s and 2000s focus on a strongly technical component. So academic courses are, are a potpourri of generalities, not deepening the teams that can prepare future librarians to be leaders in their field. Uh, I think this is very um, impressive because it, it makes us think, how, how are you, we doing what are we doing to prepare students? Well, they also reveal that future professionals will need to develop leadership skills and a strong strategic, technical and social position and the full ability to show what they are in the world for. As we move towards a scenario in which digital literacy should be a basic competence of almost all professions. Well, these are some concerns that I think we must be aware of because this criticism is something that we can act on to provide some improvements. So finally, we come to our discussion, to the question and answers, and I would like you to prepare. I will just oh, show uh, some ideas merging from these international strategic documents and some answers from the questionnaire. And about this reflection, I understand that attentive and more qualified professionals enhance their performance with advantages for instruction institutions and users they deal with. And this uh, means that more investment in information professionals will do a greater expertise and competence, will, will result in greater expertise and competence. So best responses in reference management and collection space, human resources and information will gain with the improved skills of professionals and teaching and research support skills will also be better if we can know these international documents. So what do we need? We need in-depth knowledge of information resources. We need to know terminology, methods, and professional practice in order to respond uh, in the right way to each request in addition to a permanent update of our transversal skills, which includes a visible adaption to the requirements of open science. And how can we achieve this? I think we can do this through the updating and professional development and continuous training in positive and dynamic learning environments, environments, in participating in cooperation networks and social networks, but also and mainly in the search or, of our self-education. We must be curious, we must be uh, interested in our profession and discover new things and new ways to resolve the, the emerging problems that are always challenging us, challenging us. So, 
Bertel and Oakward stated that librarians offer transferable skills and specialist knowledge in a combination of implicit curiosity and commitment to the power of informed decision making, user focus, and understanding of the user's preference sources of information, attention to detail combined with the ability to listen, a willingness to communicate and a strong professional ethics. I think is, although it's more than 10 years, is still a uh, very, it's not dated, it's still very uh, actual. So in conclusion, and I'm just uh, finishing, I think institutions, faculty and students will benefit from investment in skills of information professionals. And this will be translated into greater expertise and professional competence in service and answers to reference questions. This will translate it also in better management of collections, spaces, human resources and information, and finally, in better teaching information literacy and research support skills. So, thank you very much for your patience and attention. And if you have questions, I'm now available for you and to talk about anything you want to. Okay? And I can display this presentation if you want to and send it to the my contact there. Well, I will uh, stop my screen share. Thank you so much, Tatiana. It was really interesting and I think it would be really great if you could share later the presentation with us so we can yes, go I in more depth. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, perfect. So we can check in more depth the, the research results, which were very interesting. Uh, so, does anyone have questions about about the presentation? Anyone? Okay, so before uh, the students think about any questions, I will ask you, is there anything what you personally surprised about the research result, especially if we take into account the comparison between the Portuguese and Czech students? Well, I, I was just surprised by, uh, first, no one uh, was critical about, well, no one um, used the open question to criticize something about the, the how the information and library studies are dealing with these changes. So I don't know if students there were well a little bit shy or if your uh, form of teaching is uh, a lot better than ours or yeah I'm sure that's the, I'm sure that's the reason. <laughs> I don't know. So I was curious about what kind of critic Criticism they will point out, but no one points, no one point anything. So I don't know if this corresponds. And then I was a little bit surprised for no one has um, pointed that the repositories, catalogs, and other technical sets are important in the next years because the text structures uh, well nowadays many professionals on our areas are specialized in these kind of um, tools and profound uh, profounding their studies on how we can make interop interoperability and gain um, advantages using at the same time um, 
discovery systems and everything that can uh, facilitate the search to um, dispositives that can um, well do this uh, rapidly and in an intuitive way. So I don't know if this will not be uh, very important and if this will be something more for the informatics professionals, you know? Mm -hmm. So I, I was curious about that. But I don't, well, I'm very interested in, and you, you saw that in the context. I talk a lot about reading because although we are emerging in technology, I still think that our priority uh, should be reading and readers. So, um, despite there are multiple supports, multimedia and several sources and digital sources where we can find information, reading is always the basis for knowledge. So I think librarians have also a role in that. And I don't know if you agree, but I don't I don't want to talk uh, alone. I would like if you post some questions and students, if you want to discuss something that you don't agree or if you like to underline some something that you agreed, I don't know. Okay, of course. Like and your silence doesn't mean, well, I didn't like. Okay, this. of course, <laughs> if anyone wants to say something, express their opinion, so feel free to do so. Uh, meanwhile, there is one question in chat. I'm going to read it for you. How did you react under criticism of the study program? What did not prepare students in practical way? Did you agree or disagree? Well, I agree. I, I, I feel sorry for that, but I, in this position where I am a librarian, I'm, I am a researcher, and actually now I'm also a, a professor and a, I'm also teaching, teaching in a master course for future school librarians. So I see and I, I try to make it more practical in my classes, but I think this is not the main way that my colleagues do that. So I see here a problem that we change it because the Bologna process obliged the courses of post-graduation to transform into master courses. And so instead of two, two years, we now have one year to teach future professionals and the other year is to do the thesis, the master thesis. And one year is a very uh, short period for, well, for know everything about information studies. Um, I don't know how to correct this. I think uh, internships will do something about it or at least visits to libraries to different libraries and talks with professionals will help but uh, really i understand that they are uh, much weight in theoretical things and less in practical things okay so thank who you. wants to talk to Yes, uh, Lucia wants to say something, so Lucia, go ahead. Yes, can you hear me well? 
Yes. Okay, thank you. I would like to react to what you just said. In some universities in Britain, uh, students can choose whether they are going to have an exam at the end of studies or write a thesis. Do you okay. think that if there was a choice between these two, it would help for students to gain more practice? Mm -hmm. Well, here is the same. In fact, some courses uh, allow the students to choose between an internship and um, uh, how do you say? Uh, relatory? I don't know. I'm sorry. Um, I don't know what a report in the end, a report of their experience, or instead if they want to do um, a thesis. So yes, in this in this way, I think is good because something will uh, will stay uh, about this experience. But I don't know if students will get, uh, and that, I also don't know if, if there is so, if this is so important to know how to catalog or how to index or how to classify documents. I don't, I don't see they have time to learn everything into detail, into a detailed way. They they get the notion they they know something about that, but they really will not know how to do everything um, on specific cases because there was no time to explain everything, you know. So yeah. I think I think this uh, we we should do as we do there uh, a graduation courses that here in Portugal is on, on course too. Um, undergraduate, graduate, masters and doctoral uh, studies. And each uh, level has specificities that students can uh, learn in different ways. But as we have a lack of undergraduate students in this area, all the professionals concentrate and do masters. So the masters is not sufficient. So we have librarians just like me that are undergraduate in social studies or um, arts uh, or anything. And then they do a a master in library and information studies, and it's okay to be a librarian. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's the same case for me. Actually, I have my first master's degree in English language and literature, and yeah. I'm doing masters yes. in my, information my, my, science and librarianship. Yes, mine was in Portuguese studies and literature, so <laughs> it's, it's the same. Same. <laughs> Okay, thank okay. you for your answer. Uh, are there any more questions? If not, uh, if I may, um, what just came to my mind when I was listening to you discussing this, uh, what I personally feel is that there might be maybe some discrepancy in expectations, mm -hmm. like what we expect from this academic level of education of giving us, because there are some they might, might argue that university is not preparing you for being librarian, but maybe information scientist. And that's where uh, oh, these discrepancies yes. come from, because for becoming librarian, you know, to know how to catalog, how to do the, all these practical, practical things, uh, you actually yes. don't need, or, or some might argue that you actually don't need to have a degree. So what is your yes. view on this? Th this is a good point. I, I wasn't seen by this point, but you have well, you, you, you have all the reasons because we assist to changes, but well, I studied, uh, I studied along, along all my life and I still study, but 
when I did my um, master or post graduation to be a librarian, it, it, it was in the early, it was in 2000. And yes, we were preparing to be librarians. And nowadays, there are uh, several preparations to data management, information specialists, and so on that are not uh, really um, concerned with ca cataloging or that kind of things. So maybe we see a shift not only on the contents of the courses because of that, but also in the expectations, as you, saw, as you said. So this is very interesting because maybe this answers uh, what we are looking for. Are we looking for uh, several inputs of several areas in our profession? Or um, we think we have to be specialized and in each of these areas? Well, uh, in reading, in cataloging, in databases, in searching, and everything of, about technologies or we can um, let it go to another specialist. I don't know because it's, it's very difficult to let go and we want to be professionals with all the skills. I don't know if you agree. I do agree because I, I really agree that uh, the load of skills that are expected from the librarians nowadays is really, really wide. Yes, and, and management and everything. Maybe I will ask you, uh, in your university, uh, do you have any sort of specializations in the Department no. of Library Studies? No. No, just uh, librarians. It's for everything and a course in uh, where I teach for teaching librarians, you know, the librarians they are in schools, in in basic schools. It's just these two options. You want to be a school librarian or you want to be a librarian? Okay. okay? Thank you. Um, okay, another chance uh, to ask questions. Then let's just me talking, please. Does anyone want to ask anything? Well, you realize that I'm not an English native speaker. So several times I was a little bit confusing in my presentation, but I hope you you understand that. Yeah, so there's no need to be shy. <laughs> uh, okay, maybe I will ask one more question. Um, what do you think is the best way of providing education to future academic librarians? Is it, uh, is it a university degree or is it anything else, like some sort of vocational training maybe? Because as we just, um, as we just said, the university degree obviously doesn't provide anything, everything yes. that's needed for yeah. this job. I, I think this is common to all the professions nowadays. We have to do uh, we have to have a professional degree. It's very important to develop our uh, knowledge and to develop um, thinking critically and know the authors and know the theories. But we also have, and this is very important, long life training it's impossible for you to be a good librarian if you don't um, go and update your skills frequently. I think this is very important to have a small um, training in specific areas to complement our 
uh, first um, graduation. And this can be a, a, a better way to respond to the contexts that we were talking about and also to respond to the specificities of our um, work because we can work in a specialized library on on an enterprise or a company and we have to know something more uh, specific from that um, uh, business and we can then work in another um, and in a public library and we have to know more about i don't know management or human resources or the um, the part of how you can answer in the reference desk and we have to do this kind of uh, take this kind of micro credentials so that we can update our skills during all our life. I think this is a good way. Do you think it works in practice like this, how you just described? Or what is the uh, difference between uh, like what it should be and how is it now in, in Portuguese, let's say? Well, we have an association, I'm part of it too, uh, that offers these uh, little uh, courses, formation in several areas, but this is, I think, not sufficient. So I think higher education institutions should promote uh, short uh, training courses, you know, that can deeper knowledge, but also reflect these changes in, I don't know, digital fluency or um, information systems or management of, library, of libraries, because um, the professional associations give uh, some training, but, but this, I think it's uh, somehow superficial and in a way, well, initial knowledge, you know? And then we, if you want to uh, deeper this knowledge, we don't have anywhere to go. So you, you can make a group <laughs> of colleagues and study by yourselves. But I think the universities could and should offer uh, mini courses that complement the first uh, graduation. Yeah, I agree, completely agree. <laughs> Uh, maybe I will ask our students now, is there anyone who is currently working in the library and is willing to share with us if they feel well prepared for this job by their current education? Lucia? I'm working at the faculty in the library. And uh, since I've started studying information science and librarianship as my second master's and I am now in my fourth semester, uh, I would say I wasn't uh, prepared for everything that I do in the library, but I also didn't know that there are the things that I do in the library are done by the library, <laughs> because <laughs> I work in uh, I work in uh, study and research support, and I work a lot with databases and uh, bibliometry uh, and scientometry, and I had a lot about open access uh, and uh, many things uh, <laughs> that I don't think are uh, that are very specific for working in a university library. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's it's kind of an area which uh, wouldn't really fit everyone who wants to be a librarian. Yes, I agree with you because I work also in the in the, in the university library. And this is very challenging because there are 
there are even concepts that our colleagues in other libraries don't understand. You know? Well, yes. when we talk, for instance, when you talk in open science to a public librarian, they don't know what to are, what are you talking about. I don't know what is this. When we talk about uh, databases or repositories, they don't know what we are talking about. They just know the catalog, the, the public, the users, the, co the quotation, the cataloging and exhibitions and lecture, um, promoting uh, leisure reading, promoting reading to the youngers. So everything that relates on research, everything that relates on um, academic production, uh, academic writing, or several aspects of our um, skills that we have to manage to, to have. Several of our colleagues in other uh, institutions don't know and they are also not interested and know but I don't condemn them <laughs> because, well, they have another things to think about. Actually, one of the things that I do as a librarian is that I teach uh, in a course that's for bachelor students of information mm -hmm. science and librarianship, but I didn't study bachelors <laughs> in this subject. So I know there is practice in, in, in like in the bachelor's degree. Okay. So, which I didn't get, but I teach it. Yes, <laughs> so, yes. it's my case <laughs> also. Yeah. Well, well, so I, I think I there like is it. some kind of preparation for this work, uh, but it's this very specific academic librarianship. Okay, thank you. Thank you for sharing. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, uh, are there any more questions for for Tatiana? Well, I, I understand all the students are very shy. I exclude yeah. Lucy. <laughs> but it's okay. Okay. Well, uh, I, yeah. I hope you have liked it, this, and maybe uh, I hope also that this kind of studies will inspire you to um, to want to know more about our profession and to uh, make you curious about how can you improve yourself to be a good professional. Definitely. I think it was very interesting to see how is it done elsewhere. And um, I think we enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. So I think if there are no more questions from the students, I think we can uh, we can finish this. So if, if there is anything else you want to share with us as your last words before saying goodbye. Yeah, uh, to nechat po přednášce? Uh, okay, so I think that's it. So thank you very much, Tatiana. It was really, really enjoyable. And uh, yeah, it was wish... my honor to, to share with you. I, I'm very happy to be here. And well, I, I expect the all success in everything. Okay, bye. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you. And it was our pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Wish you all the best with your work. Bye. See bye you. Bye. Well, if you if you meet me in some Thank you. Bye bye. Yes. And if you meet me in some conference, please come and talk to me. Okay? Will do. <laughs> okay. Bye. You have our word. Bye. Once again, thank you very much. Thank you.